I mean, uh, we did something on this show once about this, and it, it harkened back to that time in the 90s when, uh, in New York City, you remember this, the broken windows theory. The, the uh, Giuliani administration, I think it was, that said, look, if we fix the broken windows in bad neighborhoods, if we cover over the graffiti, if we pick up the trash, people feel better. We're going to feel better, we're going to look better, and then we're going to be better. And I think that's really true. I think people dress slovenly because they're morally slovenly. Well, because their their education is slovenly. Because everything about what we do is slovenly. Well, I will say this. I certainly see a corollary between behavior and how we appear in the world, our our dress. And I think that this erosion in dressing, this this everyone's wearing sweatpants and tank tops. Look at the correlation. Look at all the bad behavior that's in profusion and and that's escalating. But now, now what? Where does obesity fit into this? Because I know you s <laughs> see. I mean, I, I I've talked about this recently, and you know, fat shaming. I wasn't fat shaming. What I was saying is, obesity is a national epidemic. It isn't. It is a health crisis. So I, I saw recently Kmart is going to call their plus size now fabulous size, and I think, you know, you wouldn't do that about any other health problem. Call it fabulous. Well, here's the conundrum as I see it, um, and and I'm coming out of a season of Project Runway where finally we're working with models who range in size from two to twenty-two. So I've been with a lot of larger women this season, and I've loved every single second of it. The conundrum is we can't fix it all simultaneously. So we have a population of roughly 85 million women who are larger than the regular department of a department store. They're, they're larger than a size 12. And there are so few options for them about what to wear. And I think that's atrocious. Um, regardless what do you mean so few options? I can't believe that if there are that many people who weigh that much, there is much be, uh, billions of dollars to be made. They you must are, make clothes for them. Absolutely right. You are absolutely correct that there are billions of dollars to be made. This was um, a primary catalyst for an op-ed piece that I wrote for the Washington Post last fall. Um, why aren't the retailers on top of this? Forget about the designers. I, I at one point was working for a company that I, had 48 I think, brands, I think, and no one wanted to design for her. Well, I think maybe they are. I think what it is that people say, why can't you make clothes that make me look good? Because you're fat. It's not the clothes. You I can't. I disagree. Really? Look at the opera Oh, come on. But is there are a, not to you know, women, and they look fabulous. But why? I mean, you know, you say you have models who are size 22. Yes. Okay, you'd have to page through an awful lot of vanity fairs to find a fat model. I don't disagree. Okay. Well, for some reason, I mean, I, I go where the money is. That tells me what the truth is. And the truth is, people, when they are selling clothes, sell it on skinny people. And I, my point about all that is it's an unattainable body size and shape for most women in this nation. Okay, but not being... But that is, yes. But there's something in the middle, right? But I... But I, I believe that the fashion indus industry is complicit with media in general and how we portray the ideal of beauty. And my belief is we need to show much more diversity in size and shape and show that, uh, forgive the term, but big is beautiful and I can well, be. I, I tell you, and, and I'm also, I guess that's, I mean, that is, <laughs> that's one battle to fight.